The Kaya Museum opened November 28, 1959 in Savannah, Georgia. It was the residence of Dr. Calvin L. Kaya and Miss Virginia Jackson Kaya, who were natives of Baltimore, Maryland. The Kayas moved to Savannah in 1950, where they both worked as educators and community leaders. Calvin was chairman of the Division of Education at Savannah State, which probably was the last, the largest division, and there were a lot of people who finished Savannah State College who were teachers in Savannah. Mm -hmm. And so they had a tremendous influence of people because of this contact. And she was very prominent in the, in the field of art. I don't know of any other black person at that time who was that prominent in art as she was. I know she was I, I, She was very outstanding with her artwork uh -huh. at Beach. At Beach Junior High, she was a, she was a um, art teacher. And um, as a matter of fact, um, she had an art club. And so I was a part of the art club. And um, we would, she would take us home and we would work around in the, in, in the, um, in the museum. And so we knew quite a bit and we saw some of the paintings and the arts and art, you know, that she would do. They always saw what they were doing as telling the story of African descended people, but doing it in a way that all people would benefit from knowledge. He was always promoting education, you know, he was, he was education and uh, art was probably a sideline, but she was that she was buried in it. Every time we would take and do something that was, she would always, you know, art isn't everything, as you should know, you know, and, and it was, she was just very articulate and she was very caring. And I guess we basically were her children. And, um, and she showed us a lot of, and I mean, whatever we did, she would, she would, um, she was an encourager. Um, so, and I'm, I'm sure that many of us you know, what we're doing now has come from teachers like um, Ms. Kaya. As a child, Ms. Kaya couldn't go to museums, so she started one of her own. She began collecting artifacts in 1936 with her mother, Dr. Lily M. Jackson, who was an NAACP leader in Baltimore, Maryland. The Kayas believe in exposing people to the wonders of the world, and they use their home as a platform. The latter part of 1958, it was developed as a museum. The first step was getting that two-story window ready. But it was very interesting when that was done because I don't think many people in the area had seen a window going from, it was the entrance, I call it the porch, and it went all the way up to the ceiling. It was. She, she, was, she was very original. Children uh, in rural areas would not have a chance to see something like that. They even designed the house so that it would be inviting for people to uh, feel comfortable to come in and, and see those things. I went to Catholic school and the nun had, the, the nun had already laid the groundwork for us to go to the museum and so of course we were young kids walking in pairs. We were excited about going. And of course, we were in uniforms and we had our little beanies on and we thought we were all that. But when we got to the museum, Ms. Um, Kaya greeted us warmly at the door and asked us to step right in. Welcome to the Kaya Museum, which was started November the 28th, 1959. I had visited them several times at the museum and uh, I was always interested in him as you walked in the door. Uh, his emergency certificate from the Board of Regents was right there in front of the, well, the stairway, you know, went up, was right, but his thing was right there. So I always kidded him all the time. I said, first thing you see in your house is your emergency certificate. Vice President Emeritus and Professor Emeritus of Educational Administration. She had so much wall space until the way that the pictures were arranged in the residence, they complemented each other. And um, she had pieces of exotic furniture. I, I remember the walls being laden with uh, paintings that she had done. And her furniture was very uh, antiquish, I guess you would call it. And 
um, the how the that's what I remember the when you walk in is everything being very historical. She had, she would take our things that we made in class or in our art club, and she had them in the museum with our name. So you know we we had that opportunity to have our work at least exhibited. Um, she had a space in there for that. The bird was a draw too, the talking bird. And of course, you know, young children, we wanted to say something to see the bird remark us. <laughs> Fish that was in the bathroom. It was some large um, goldfish that she had. Then she also had um, the manor bird that was called Joe. And he would always say, hello, Joe. You know, and, and we would always, you know, we would always mimic him and he would mimic us back. And we were like um, children in a, I guess, a candy factory because when you saw something that touched you, you say, come here, come here, look at this, look at that. And you were just doing just like that, like you were at a game or something. It was so much to see, you didn't know where to start. And um, that was a different experience for us because to go to a black museum and see people that look like you. That was a good experience for us. The Kai has left behind a legacy of prominence and influence in Savannah. It is unfortunate that the once beautiful Kyla Brownville home is in a state of dilapidation and deterioration. Dr. Deborah Johnson Simon has taken on the charge to help save the Kaya through the efforts of the Center for the Study of African and African Diaspora Museums and Communities. Dr. Johnson Simon learned about the Kayas through a 1983 African American Museums Association directory called the Blacks in Museum. There were over 300 participants in that directory and the work of CFS AADMC was to put a face and a story to each of them. But we got fascinated with the, with the Kaya and wanted to be here to work on that story while we uh, build our reputation as a research institute. According to Miss Virginia Kaya, art was in everything and Dr. Johnson Simon created Friends of the Kaya in 2014 to get the community and various creatives involved in saving the Kaya. SSU student Tori Bex wrote a children's book and Hudson Hill quilter Tina Hicks created several quilts in the Kaya's honor. With the character in my story, I wanted her to find, find not also find the house, but find something magical and new that will help her also as a, use to help her as a tool to lead her to get the Kaya house up and running again. This one I wanted to give the, the readers a feel of her bringing the community together helping them understand why she wanted to um, fix up this house and open it back up to the community. So I, I, I also added the fairy, so you know, she's helping her present the, uh, her plans and her vision for helping the house come back to life. We learned about the Kaya house and it's grander and it was a beautiful place. Even looking at it now, even in a dilapidated state, it's still impressive to me made me think about community and community, how communities used to be. The Kaya House was an extraordinary and beautiful museum. Therefore, we should always remember it in its glory and try to save it because art isn't everything. Say that because just saying, I want to do something about the Kaya Museum did not resonate with people. Uh, did not resonate with my students, even the ones that were right here in Savannah, born and raised in Savannah. I could almost see on her face that it would be a face of awe, you know, no, not my house, you know, not the museum, because she tried to make sure that that museum was always in top shape. So it, it would be kind of distorting to her right now to, um, to see it in the disrepair it is in right, right about now. Sometimes, because we live here, we're so close to it. Kai Museum should never have gotten into a state of disrepair. Make sure that you know about the old ways so that you can also pass that knowledge on to the future. 
But when we lose that knowledge, like some people were saying, oh, we have forgotten about the Kai. But once they start to remember, there are such beautiful stories that are connected with it. For more information about the Kaya House Museum, contact the Center for the Study of African and African Diaspora Museums and Communities. P.O. Box 5261, Savannah, Georgia 31414 or email at cfsaadmc.center at gmail.com.